Hey there, small business owners. Ever feel like you're always putting off updating your website? For most of you out there, building and maintaining an online presence can be overwhelming. Your day-to-day schedule can greatly impact necessary tasks like keeping your website up to date and planning marketing campaigns to stay competitive. Brand You Love offers monthly packages for website maintenance, marketing campaigns that help keep current customers engaged while attracting new ones, and social media strategies that keep you in touch with your customers. At Brand You Love, we do the legwork for you, so you don't have to. Contact us today at brand, the letter U, love.com. Welcome to Desert City, a D&D 5e actual play produced by TTRP Theater. I'm Duke Walter. I play Ellen. Jazz Abramowitz is the Dungeon Master. Chris Freedom plays Theo. Dean Martin Jr. is Kevin. And our special guest, Cher Davis, plays Mila. This is episode 24. What? 24? If you're back to listen, thanks! This is the second and final part of Mila's adventure. We're so grateful that she said yes and took part in our story for a little bit. And we can't wait to have her back again. Be sure to check her out on Twitch at ThatGamerShare. C-H-E-R. Here at TTRP Theater, we have done a ton of actual plays in a wide number of TTRPGs. So make sure to check out our YouTube page, TTRP Theater, two words. And do all the things, please. They're free, and they help us out. Like, subscribe, you know. You've heard it a million times. I think this episode kind of shows it, but friends are important. Both new and old. I know that my world's better because of my friends. I hope yours is too. All right, let's get into it. Welcome back to Desert City. Uh, Mila and Theo, you've had a a couple of days um, to sort of talk through your plans. Tell me uh, what you are planning to do and let's, let's start the process of getting you out of this prison. So um, since Mila is the one who has the magic to blast through the uh, hole that's already in the wall, but it's not quite uh, broad enough to fit her frame uh, at the absolute dead of night or just whenever we are both aware that there is the least amount of guards possible Right after lunch. Right after lunch. Right after lunch, you think yeah, so? Okay. They, well, they serve they serve lunch and then they bail on us for like three hours. Oh, that's right. That's right. You're right. It is quiet around here. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, here we go. You may want to stand back, like all the way back, and uh, Mila. Uh, prepares to cast um, oh wait before she does that was Mila also able to secure all of her possessions she normally would have <laughs> that was the one question I forgot to ask it's nice that Theo has all of his equipment <laughs> does Mila have all of her, all of her the life? only thing that Mila has outside of her um the only, actually, the only thing that Mila has is the rod. Okay. Okay. All right. So, yeah. Theo is opposite wall, ducked down, like protecting himself from a nuclear strike. And while he's down there, he's, he's scooping as much of what he thinks is soil into his tin cup. Okay. Uh, what? So, after. Telling Theo to stand back, 
Mila is going to try to cast Shatter. Okay. At her current level, she is casting fourth level spells by default, folks. So uh, here's hoping that roll comes out nice. You said 150. So uh, the wall between you two, if you're focusing on the wall between you two, Mm -hmm. um, if you focus on the area that already has the uh, slit in it, then that's going to be 75. Okay. Hey, hey, Mila. Yes. Do you think, which by the way is blowing my mind because that's my cat's name. My cat's (laughs) name is Mila and it's kind of a unique name for a cat. So anyway, (laughs) sidetrack. All right, I'm back. I'm talking to my cat. So Mila, do you think I need to uh, cast a spell to, to protect us? That would be preferable. Okay. Um, I have to pretend I'm already smart enough to know which one of these does that. <laughs> so. and, whether, and whether or not you need uh, what, the, what the range is on it. If you need to touch a willing uh, target, well, we can't do that just yet. So That'll be the conjugal visit later. I'm praying <laughs> that Ellen shows up in drag in disguise as a conjugal visit. I mean, that could be a good thing. That could be a good thing. I don't even know that there's jail cells in the church. Like, I'm, my fucking mind yeah, is right. blown. I would, that, that is a conjugal visit I would pay cash money to see. <laughs> uh, I, could seduce, I could seduce Theo so fast. So you fast. Are, are it's already happened. Like... I mean, it happens every day. Yeah. <laughs> You all don't realize there is an after show, uh, right. you know, special. Yeah, every, called- every time we say <laughs> there's not something weird going on, there is definitely something weird uh, going on. After hours with the TTRP theater, you know, <laughs> it could be a thing. So, yeah, okay. so that's, um, that's, well, that's preferable if you are able to do so, but it's up to you. I have blessed, but that feels like it helps people concentrate. I think most of my stuff might be after after an injury. Sanctuary. You you ward a creature within range against attack. I don't know. Would that would this count against as defending against attack? Yeah, you could you could ward yourself. Okay. Okay. I mean, maybe I need to do that. Right, because I'd hate for anything um, to happen <laughs> to you while I'm trying to do this. It's okay. pretty powerful, uh, but even so, I would need to possibly cast it more than once. So, Right. Casting that spell. There we go. All right. All right. All right. So, so um, Shatter is going to make a significant amount of noise. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, So once you cast Shatter, you essentially have 10 rounds of actions Mm -hmm. before there were people there. So that's basically I'm giving you one round every 30 feet. The closest people that want to check in on you are about 300 feet away. So once you cast Shatter, you have 10 rounds before people are going to be all up in those cells. Here's another question. Are you able to move through a, a barrier on your own magically at all? Like if you needed to get from point A, which is where you are now, to point B, which is on the other side of that barrier in an instant? No, mm. nothing like that. All right. You don't have like Misty Step or Face Step or anything like that, right, Chris? No. Yeah. Correct. Thank you, DM. I was trying not to be as meta as possible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we live in a world of magic. It's uh, yeah. an honest question. Um, <laughs> right. So, all right. Here we go. And, all right. Uh, she'll go ahead and cast Shatter and let me find that button. Here we go. Shatter damage, 19. Okay, let me make a 
I think it says I have to pass the the creature has disadvantage on passing is it a constitution? Correct. So if the wall has a constitution saving throw at all, um it does. Um fair. And I will roll it now. It's got five. So it fails the first. And let's see if it's even worse. Now, a creature made of, you yeah, right, it has disadvantage because it's made of inorganic material. So it fails. It takes your full shatter damage. Which is only 19. Oy, 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 oy. So you do 19 points of damage. Um, you start to see a crack and a huge piercing sound rings through the subterranean area, alerting uh, Dawnbringers in the main corridor that something is happening in the jail cell. You now have 10 rounds to do whatever you want to do before people start showing up. Tell me when we hear them running from a distance. All right, so you hear Mila kind of, she is catching her breath on the other side of the wall and she says, okay, that means they're probably going to be here. Quickly, one thing, if you can somehow fuck up the uh, the lock to the door of your cell, I'm sorry, I didn't think of this uh, sooner, but you may want to do that as well. That may make it even harder for them while they're fumbling with keys, this sort of thing. Plus, I need a minute. And she's going to take an action with the rod to... um, She will hold on to the rod, insert uh, whatever uh, dirty jokes you wish here, and um, (laughs) (laughs) and then she will uh, regain her spell slot um, and as she takes a minute. So that's a whole action that I took from that. Got it. Theo uh, is taking his his dagger and jamming it into the lock mechanism and prying and trying to break it. Okay, give me um, like uh, give me a melee attack against the lock. The word melee is throwing me off. Hit the lock. Just just roll to hit the lock. <laughs> the word is messing me up. Okay, <laughs> it's not on this sheet anywhere. Okay, twenty one. 21. All right. Do your damage. Six. Six damage. Ooh, you, you, you fucked up the lock pretty good. You got a dagger jammed in there. That is one round gone. Uh, round two. I don't suppose the door just pops open, does it? It does not. <laughs> <laughs> Which would be the multi Python right? or, uh, you know. <laughs> so, uh, Theo, can I, can I move after that still? Yeah, of course. So Theo gets down against the wall and holds up holds up his shield. Okay. Perfect. Wonders why he wasn't doing that the first time. <laughs> Round two. Um and uh we'll just go we'll just go in order of the first action. So Mila, you're up. All right. So um now would round two count as that action uh to uh go ahead and uh, use the rod to regain the spell slot, or that was your round one action. So this is now that you've rested your minute. Okay, fair enough. So we're going to go at it again. Incoming, and here we go. That's better. That's a twenty-two, or that's at least twenty-two damage. Uh, full damage against the wall. All right. So you have done forty-one damage to this wall in between you. Theo, you're up. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I, I'm i just waiting for the wall to fall. I mean, you have a mace. You can also attack the wall if you want. If you okay. were planning on going out the northern wall through that corridor, that wall you have to take down with damage too, so you can attack that wall if you'd like. You can use your spiritual weapon. There's a multitude of ways that you can contribute. Oh, well, uh, yeah. So my spiritual weapon, is that going to do damage to a wall? Okay. That's actually, I could also use it on as my bonus action, right? Right. Does it use a turn just to cast it? 
So the way that it reads that we've talked before is that you can cast it and you can make an attack all as your bonus action. But then on future rounds, you have to use your attack. You have to use your action as an attack, or you can move it to a different location with a bonus action. Okay. So it's not passively attacking in addition to whatever I'm doing. No, just the first one. So it's like you summon it and you put it on something and it just like makes that attack all as one action. You you summon and it attacks. But then after that, it is a purposeful attack with this virtual weapon. Okay. Uh Uh-huh. A natural 20 plus four. Whoa. All right. All right. Hell yeah. Fine. So, and you're using your spiritual weapon? Yep. Okay. So how much damage did it, does it do naturally? 10. 10. So you do 20 damage to this, to the wall. And were you going after the wall in between you or were you going after the Northern wall? The Northern wall. Okay. So that had 150 and you do 20 damage against it. That was your bonus action. You can also take an action this round. But it's a different action, you're saying? Yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay, well, then I will also hit it with the mace. Okay. All right. It is 19 plus 4, 23. All right. Uh, Go ahead and roll your damage. Uh, Six. Six. All right. Um, You summon your giant flaming baby head of Lathander. It makes that stupid giggly noise <laughs> descends upon the wall you start to see rock crumbling down you pull your mat your mace out you take a swing at it just chunking away at it um that is round two uh round three mila what would you like to do um so uh, of course between each of these rounds is when Milo would use the rod to regain that spell slot once again. Um, okay. And we are just going to shatter the heck out of this thing. Uh, has some of the, the opening widened at all at this point? Is it only just- Yeah, you're, you're starting or? to see, you're starting to see the barrier weaken, but it's not anything that you can make your way through yet. Okay. Now with the rod, you have to, that consumes a full action waiting for it to mm-hmm. recharge or whatever mm-hmm. okay so if you're going to do that then you will have to sit out round three while you wait for the recharge um okay fair enough because uh <laughs> and all of the uh, warlocks out there that sympathize <laughs> with me now i only have the two uh, slots spell slots so if i'm going to continue to contribute yes yeah that's going to add a little higher stakes to this but it is necessary yeah mm-hmm. mila takes a deep breath and refocuses her energy um and theo you can take an action okay um yeah the mace seemed good i'm gonna hit with the mace again as opposed to the spiritual weapon again yeah for some reason i decided to do that (laughs) (laughs) your spiritual weapon is still out so remember like it's it stays out for like a full hour i think or until you tell it to go away Okay. Isn't the attack with the spiritual weapon his bonus action? Can't he do both? No, 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 no. I don't think so. Um, I well, think that's what that I the, originally thought, but I'm con- let me I'm let me pretty double. Sure, that was the argument that you made to me because I was arguing the other way. Well, no, no. What what I was arguing the first time was that upon casting, it can do uh, the attack. The question now is, it's out where does its use fall? So that's the question now. So let's just go read it real quick. As a bonus action on your turn, you can move the weapon up to 20 feet and repeat the attack against a creature within five feet of it. Hell yeah. Okay, so you can take an action and a bonus action. You can mace and spiritual weapon it. So with the mace, I got another natural 20. So 24. Hello! Roll your damage. Sweet. Yes, nice. And 12. 12, shit. So you do 24 against the northern wall. 
Okay. And now you can take your bonus action attack with your spiritual weapon. Uh, five plus four. I got nine. Nine damage. Okay. That is round three. Um, round four. All right. So Mila is back in the game now. And she goes, incoming! <laughs> and here we go again. Oh, much better this time. Thank you, Dice Gods. This time we've got we've got 27 damage, depending on the uh, those rolls. I got a three on my first of the disadvantage, so I'm pretty sure I'm just not even going to roll the second one. You do the full 27 damage against the wall in between. Uh, that now is down to 14 points left. Okay. All right. Fair enough. One more hit and I should be through. And uh, that's the end of Mila's turn. Mila is going to do the same. Uh, uh, hold on to the rod, regain the spell slot. Next turn or up. All right. Uh, Theo. You are up for round four. What would you like to do? Uh, same. So I'll start with the mace. I got 19 to hit. 19 hits. And five. All right. And then if you want to, as a bonus action, you can attack with your spiritual weapon. Indeed. And that is 14 to hit. That will hit nine all right uh that wall is about almost halfway destroyed you are just wailing on that raw wall nice. all right top around five mila is recharging mm -hmm. and Theo, you can do it again if you want one more time 19 plus four to hit i got a 23 that hits and six. All right. Bonus action. 16 plus four to get 20 to hit. That'll hit. Yep. And six. It is more than halfway. It is starting to crumble. And the other wall, Mila, looks like it almost looks like if you just gave it a couple of good kicks, it's going to fall over. Um, it's looking pretty, pretty beat up. Top around six. Um, Mila, you're up. One more go. Here we go. Incoming. There it is. Ooh, nice. All right. All right. Let me roll here. Oh, first one misses. Excellent. Oh, wait. Did I do the right one? I did. My shield's up, by the way. Thank goodness for that disadvantage. <laughs> for the disadvantage. Yeah. You do that. That wall <clears throat> comes crumbling down. You see Theo crouched uh, with a flaming uh, spiritual weapon uh, behind him, and he's protecting himself with the shield and his mace out. Um, the room is now open between the two of you. That is your action, Theo. Uh, go ahead. Nice to see you. Mila. Ah, uh, same, same. Uh, you're just about as tall as I picture. All right, carry on. <laughs> she, she kind of like <laughs> steps in. Do you think we need to jam your lock too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that would probably be a good, be a yeah. good idea. So I'll start, I'll just start on my wall with the mace. I'm going to just do the same actions. Uh, I have 12 to hit. Uh, that will hit four all right spiritual weapon i've got 19 to hit and eight all right um that concludes round six we're at round seven you can start to hear footsteps but they are quite a ways away but you are starting to hear them um mila quickly uh, takes a, a, a hefty enough rock in one hand, picks up some shards of stone that have fallen to the ground, and she takes Theo's advice 
and she jams them in the opposite end of the keyhole uh, on the door to her cell and just mashes them in there. She knocks them in there to make it that much more difficult for them to access the door from the other side. Got it. Perfect. All right. And then Theo, your round seven. All right. Natural one. So five to hit. Uh, you miss. Um, that time you just don't get a good grip on the mace. You're starting to get tired. You just It just right. kind of bounces off. You, you just hit a real hard spot. All right. Spiritual weapon. I have 20 to hit. Not a natural 20. That'll hit. Five. All right. Um, Mila. That concludes round seven, top of round eight. Um, footsteps are getting closer. Got it. So since she didn't uh, use a spell that last round, uh, she will uh, scurry up to the um, to the the opening now between their rooms, and uh, she will say, "Stand clear." And she'll try to allow Theo to get the hell away from the wall. And this time she's trying to unleash the, uh, the spell, her spell, at the, at the wall he's been working on. Got it. So here's hoping. Come on, baby. Okay. That's uh, 21. Is that consuming spell slots? That is, I still had two, um, I have two spell slots total. I had replenished them from the last time I used the rod. So right now, this is consuming one of my spell slots. And what was that DC save? 15. 15. Uh, it, it passes that time. Uh, so it'll oh, take half. Oh, even at a disadvantage, yeah. Yep, even at disadvantage, it, it rolled. Uh, it's got a plus five, and it or, uh, it got a thirteen and a sixteen. So that's a well made one. Hold on. <laughs> so ten, uh, ten and I uh, will round up. So eleven damage. Uh, it takes half. Um, okay, and Theo, you're up round eight. Uh, fourteen to hit. That'll hit. Eight. Okay. Twenty two to hit. And That'll hit. Yes. Nine. Damn. All right. Got it. We are at the top of round nine. Those footsteps are literally down the hall. Here's um, a question yeah. for you then, DM. Yes. Can we see through the hole in the wall? Can we see at least the the hallway that we expect? You, yeah, there are enough cracks in that wall, um, as it right now is on the verge of breaking, that you can see the hallway uh, that, according to the maps you have, uh, or that the Thieves Guild had, um, looks to go about 300 feet in one direction. Away from the people. Away from the main corridor, correct. Gotcha. Perfect. Then, if we are able to see that far, and um, I will say, uh, Mila has at least dark vision, at least 60 feet. As, as does Theo, yeah, as a half orc, he has dark we, vision. We well. know that at least it's supposed to be, supposed to be 300 feet, and I hope they're right about those dimensions, because here we go. She turns to Theo. And you see a, a different sparkle in her very large hazel eyes. And she says, do you trust me? I don't even know you, but I'm in for the ride. Let's make it happen. Well done. Here we go. And she says playfully, and she will actually grab you around the waist very suddenly. And um, let's see if we will send the millennials scrambling to Google on this one. Does anyone remember the TV show Quantum Bleak? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That lovely, that lovely yeah. door, right? That yeah, uh -huh. friend Al used to come in and out of, right? Yeah. So 
uh, CEO uh, before you, you see another door that superimposes itself over this opening that we've made together in this wall. It is shimmering, uh, bright, and uh, almost too bright for your eyes to look directly at. And it's ringed with purple uh, mist. And it, as she grabs you, she steps with you into this portal. And she's casting Dimension Door. As she reaches for me, I put the beans in the cup of soil and I pitch it down the hallway where they're running. Okay. Um, you th- <laughs> fucking insane. Both of them? Yeah. Okay. And you're throwing them like into the hallway? I'm chucking them down the hall as far as I can. Okay. So you see a shimmering door in front of you. And I imagine it, I can almost see it like it's it's like slow motion in a movie scene. You have Mila, uh, her face illuminated by the light of the door. Somehow there's wind blowing through her her hair. She is gesturing for you to come uh-huh. Come join her at the door. Come hither. Theo takes the two beans, reaches his hands out of the barred door, and chucks the beans down the hall. Go ahead and roll that damage. Uh, I think it's 5d4. Okay. And roll it twice, of course, one for each bean. Well, I've got to roll. So I've got to roll 10d4. Yeah, that'll work. Uh, you throw these, chuck these beans down the hall, and it erupts in uh, flame as it touches the ground um, and temporarily um, singes some of the walls, does some damage, but does create a barrier um, for those who are coming around. So that's a smart move. Um, you were at round nine. I'm going to go ahead and extend um, to round. 11 uh, before those from the main hall get there. Um, So you bought yourself an extra round. Um, Now, do you go through the door? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mila, why don't you describe what happens when you guys go through that door? So uh, as she grabs Theo, uh, she envisions she she stares straight forward uh, and in her mind she is concentrating 300 feet that way and as as her eyes shine as brightly as the door for a moment and in an instant Theo you see a flash before your eyes again too bright for you to even keep your eyes open. And the next thing you know, you are standing uh, in whatever space that the DM is about to tell us. <laughs> 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 but uh, you feel you, you, the, the sensation is almost like you have been shunted forward uh, through this space. That's fucking brilliant. So you focus, you're looking down the hallway and in your mind, you are thinking 300 feet that way. You guys pass through the door and you're transported to what looks to be a wall. Now, Mila, if the maps that you've seen are correct, on the other side of that wall is outside. Okay. So you guys are going to have to, again, get past this wall. This wall is 300 hit points. Oh. Now, you you passed... <laughs> this, oh, no. You, this demon oh, no. door, pa- this dimension door passed so many things that I had planned on the way out. So here's what we're going to say. Okay. You have two rounds left of the original 10 plus the one that Theo bought you. 
Mm -hmm. by throwing the beans. So you have two rounds there. There were four people coming, four guards that were coming your way. Um, They are yelling. Um, They are yelling about the fire. They're yelling down to what was in between your cell and the outer wall. There were going to be four guards at different checkpoints that you teleported past. So through their series of communications, those guards now know that you are somewhere in that hallway or that there's, they should be looking for you in that hallway. Um, they don't obviously know exactly where you are because nobody showed you or nobody saw you go through the dimension door, but they know that you're somewhere between the cells. Basically, Dawn Tower is on alert. Understood. Um, so basically, I'm going to give you another 10 rounds, um, but this time you have to do 300 damage to that door or to that wall that you're staring at in order to get out. Okay. Question. Do I get the sense that what when I was first assigned to this, was I given to know that there was definitely nothing else on the other side of the wall after that 300 feet? Or is it 350? That That's all you know. That's all I know. All you saw was a hallway on the map. All that you saw was a hallway that went 300 feet. Understood. And then that was supposed to go to the out. That was supposed to be to the outside on the other side of that, uh, of that hallway. Are there any, um, and I imagine this building has stood the test of some, some time to a certain extent. Is there, um, any, uh, cracks? or anything that uh, we would be able to peer through to see how much farther it is beyond this one? Give me a luck check. If you get 15 or above, then you'll be able to see a small crack. If it's less than 15, you can't see shit. Um, let's see. No, not that one. I'm trying to decrease. There we go. Because I almost rolled more than one there. Uh, yes. Here we go. Yes! The 19, baby! All Let's right. fucking go! <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> With a 19, there is um, a slight crack. If you put your eyeball right up to it, you can see Sky and grass. Fantastic. Then she will say, if you give me another few moments, let me catch my breath. I can do what I just did once again. And we can get out of this hellhole. What do you say? Let's do it. Thank you. So she's going to grip that rod tightly once more and regain that one more spell slot. But she is maxed out right now. Is there any chance that um, that Theo has ever been in this hallway or knows about where we are? I mean, I've spent my whole life in this building. Yeah, I mean, you maybe you're aware of it. I, I, I mean, what information are you? Where are you going? Where are you going with I that? I guess I'm thinking I'm I'm out of the maybe there are some paths that lead me to a door. No, this there's no door. And in fact, the hallway that you're in, um, it is it is only connected back to your cell. So you would have to backtrack all the way back to your cell to go a different path. Cool. And so it basically dead ends where we are standing right now. Correct. It dead ends to the outside. Understood. Um, So uh, while Mila uh, has a moment to uh, catch her breath, uh, she says, Well, strange predicament that you find yourself in. What did you do to get uh, to, to be put in here in the first place anyway? I'm curious. Yeah, honestly, I've done nothing. Uh, Apparently, 
if I'm not being deceived, apparently my friends started rifling through office and found some things. But I don't know. It doesn't really fit. Like, I mean, yeah, that's the temperament of those guys, but not in the church. I just wouldn't expect it. So it seems really odd. But what do you think they use this big, empty, dead-end hallway for? Well, it's not uncommon, but sometimes the money just runs out when construction is being made. Who knows? It's a bridge to nowhere. Well, and who knows how many more cell blocks they were thinking of constructing here. This could either be they abandoned construction when they realized they had enough cells, or they could be gearing up to incarcerate plenty more. Who knows? DM, are there any other rooms or anything I can look in? No. This was just a straight hallway. But again, you're at the end of it, so no matter what, you're going to have to backtrack. Yeah, but I'd walk back five feet to go look at a room, and there might be something sketchy going on there. There's nothing within five feet of you guys. All right. Try to find a room full of sketchy stuff. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> Look the empty hall. Ah, well, <laughs> unfortunately, no. So uh, with that, Mila then uh, goes ahead and says, well, if you would like to get out of here, why not let's? And she offers her hand once again. I'm all in. Wholeheartedly reaches out and grabs her hand. And once again, her eyes flare. The doorway appears and boom, she uh, goes, she it's actually uh, goes up to 500 feet, this spell. So she goes the full 500 that direction. Oh, Lord. Um, yes. What did they build there? So you, Dimension Door, 500 feet, all of a sudden you are standing in what seems to be a um, a, a swamp filled with human feces. Uh, it's raining. You're looking up to the sky. Some For some reason, Theo doesn't have a shirt on. There's um, the Shawshank reference. Here we go. We got there. We got there. That's it. Session's yeah, over. Yeah. Oh. You, you have uh, successfully escaped uh, Dawn Tower. Um, you are you are looking back at it, um, <laughs> and they will have be spending um, the next hour or so trying to figure out where the hell y'all went. They both need to make a wisdom saving throw as they see the name Orem Gravesick tagged in huge letters on the wall right outside of Dawn Tower. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, they're they're 500 feet away from Dawn Tower. I don't think they can see that quite yet. Um, Mila, there's a there's a building across town we can hide out in called Sewataneo. Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> uh, why don't why don't let's do this? Um, because I think that's fair. Let's let's do both of you give me a luck check. Hey, not so lucky this time. That's only a two for me. Thirteen. Thirteen. Um yeah, you're sort of out in, in the middle of a field, honestly. There's there's really she like transported you quite a bit away from Dawn Tower. There's not much around uh where you are at. Uh, but it's a pretty compressed city so i'm sure if you you know start walking towards wherever one of or both of you are going to go um that you probably will run into some of some of those tags yeah let's just go find wylam i mean he's probably knows where my buddies are correct and he'll have resources to uh to clean us up (laughs) yeah you start heading towards um the spitting camel uh, where you know that you will find Wylam. Um, you certainly pass the name Orm Gravesick. Each of you give me a wisdom saving throw. So, so Ooh. Chris, just roll a d20 with your, uh, and tell me your wis- add your wisdom modifier to it. I have a wisdom button. Okay, perfect. I got a natural one plus two. Oh. Okay. 
And uh, apparently I only got the two. Mm. Oh, well. You guys see that that name. You 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 don't know why, but it, it just makes you angry. Whenever you see that name, it just makes you angry to see it. But you're not sure why. You start to make your way through town, heading to the Spitting Camel. Um, Mila, you certainly would know, um, and as being part of the Thieves Guild, would have privilege to take the subterranean tunnels the safe way uh, to the Spitting Camel if you did not want to be on the street. Up to you. Absolutely. Uh, Would definitely take that option. And she's still seething for some unknown reason. I think maybe she remembers back to the fact that her spells struggled to get through the wall or um, that uh, she's just, uh, she's, she's tired. You know, it's that, that angry, tired <laughs> kind yeah. of me- a mentality that she's in right now. It's like, Ugh. You know, I mean, I may need to charge while I'm extra for this one. Ugh. And all these faces. Oh, he did not tell me. <laughs> oh, he did not warn me. It would be so disgusting. Oh, so um, yes, uh, we would definitely. I think if Theo, you agree with me, that staying off the street, best option. Yes, absolutely. Let's go your way. I'll follow you. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm honestly just pissed that my friends didn't come get me. I don't understand it. Assholes. So, uh, Mila seething from her experience, Theo seething from his experience, uh, make your way safely through the subterranean tunnels. Um, this is a path, Mila, that you have taken many times. You know the way. Sure. Um, and uh, every time you pass through a couple of the Thieves Guild, um, they give you knowing nods, and you guys pass through uh, the subterranean tunnels, and eventually you make it to the Spitting Camel. You come up the stairs from the subterranean entrance. It is a winding hallway. It goes up a cascading stair. And finally, the red door entering into the spitting camel is in front of you. Excellent. Uh, So at that point, tired, little hangry, to be honest, um, Mila makes her way. Um, she she goes cautiously. She motions to Theo to wait a moment. And as she peers through the other side of the door, how busy is in it is it right now? Like what what time of day are we at at the moment? How busy is it? It's late. Uh, afternoon. Uh, it, there are a number of people. Um, when you peer through the door, you see Gorn at his uh, circular table. You see a, a huge skinny orc sitting at the bar. Looks like he's been drinking for days. Um, and then you see um, a bunch of other patrons oh, poor around. <laughs> oh, poor dreamer. Okay, oh gosh, huh? this guy. And then you see other patrons milling around. It, it's it's relatively busy, I mean, but it's not like packed to the gills or anything. Okay, uh, but all whom I see, I am on good terms with. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's if there's any places in, in Calumport that you can go about your business without a whole lot of people getting into your mix, it's the spitting camel and the glistening harem. These are places that are known for being, you know, what they are. And so people there tend to mind their own business. Sure. Honor among thieves, as it were. Fair enough. So, uh, upon Mila, seeing... can you pull strings? Can you pull strings and get us a, a, a bath and a change of clothes? You know what? That's a damn fine idea. Come on. 
and um, she will uh, go over to Gorm and say, uh, Gorm, oh my goodness, what Bela, a sight to see you. Eyes you are. Oh, and you as well? Heard that you had a little adventure? Ah, has the word gotten around that quickly? Hmm. Typical. <laughs> is Theo with you, or is he like still kind of hanging behind the door? Uh, I would motion for him to come on uh, as soon as I go up to Gorm. Theo, good to see you, as always. Indeed, thank you. I appreciate you sending the cavalry. You both smell like shit. Yeah. Yes, Agreed. well confirmed. <laughs> so, uh, what we would love now is a, a good bath and uh, some food and some rest. Do you think you can hook up a girl <laughs> and her partner here for, for a moment, please? Of course, Wylam will be so pleased at how you delivered on your mission. Uh, I see no reason why we could not help you both accommodate uh, something like that. So uh, he starts kind of gesturing up the stairs. Theo, you remember, of course, where to go. You guys were just here, you know, a week or so ago. Um, So you remember. Um, But as Gorn is gesturing from across the room, um, you start to see Tramer. Approach you. Hey, um, do you, do you remember me? Remember? Yeah. How are you? Hey, I've been waiting for you. Of course. Expected. For like a week. Are, are, are we going on this adventure now? Absolutely. Absolutely. Timing is everything. I'm glad you were here. Let me get a, let me get a bath and a, and a, a nap and a meal and I'll come back to you. Hang tight. Uh, uh, Oh, okay. so I should just wait here for longer? That'd be great. Appreciate it. Uh, okay. Mila cocks an eyebrow at all of this. <laughs> <laughs> so, you've never seen a seven foot nine skinny orc look so small as you reject him. And oh he goes God. back to the bar. Oh my God. <laughs> and he goes back to the bar and orders a, yet another drink. Um, it, 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 he looks. <laughs> give, give me a give me a perception check, Chris. All right. This is share checking in for a second. Oh my god, bra! Like you can't hook a bra up. Like what? Oh no! Like you know, he's been waiting for a week. Poor thing. He oh, show no. up. He was like, "Hey, <laughs> great to see you. Let me get, let me let me get a bath. Just wait a second. Oh no! This is this is what he's there for. No, listen, he's he's along for the ride. <laughs> he, doesn't he? Uh, he has a year's salary in his pocket. <laughs> oh no, he's he's doing great financially, right. you, even yeah. not having worked for a week. Yeah, he's doing. And great. We're gonna do better than that for him, so he, he'll be all right. Poor buddy, poor buddy. Perception check, natural twenty plus four, twenty four, twenty four. Uh, he looks pathetic. He looks pathetic sitting there at the bar. That that's what you can tell. Um, but you know, you you gotta you gotta get cleaned up. Theo, as he's walking away, has this deep realization that he's neglected this poor man. He goes over to Gorn and he says, Hey, that's a good friend of mine at the bar. He has massive loyalty for me and my friends, and he's gonna help us in our next adventure. Is there anything you can do to hook this man up with a nice place to relax, maybe some companionship, uh, whatever he wants, and and I'll get you later? Well, uh, Theo, uh, I I will see what I can do, okay? Yeah, yeah, just see what you can do. I appreciate it. I'll see why. If nothing else, I'll buy the guy a beer. How about that? Fair enough. Um, so you guys uh, go upstairs to your room, and Gorn specifically says, uh, "Mila, you're in room three, and Theo, you are in room one." 
Oh, as always, you are a gentleman and a scoundrel. And she smiled for a coquettish smile. I love you, girl. Thanks. It's good to see you. Good to see you back here at the Camel. You should come by more often. Well, we'll see. We'll see if 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 Wylan has uh, more uh, more work for me. You know. I I'm sure after this he'll have plenty. <laughs> um, Theo, as you um, <laughs> as you go up to your room um, and get ready, uh, you know, to get cleaned up and get your meal and everything there is a piece of parchment neatly folded on top of your pillow what is this you open it up and it simply says you're welcome wow nice and that's where we'll end our nice. session <laughs> nice <laughs> yes oh, uh, wow all right well done man share that you fucked up all my plans man you <laughs> fucked up all my that plans. was awesome good job that is my duty thank you <laughs> yeah good job, my job. This is Desert City, a D&D 5e actual play produced by TTRP Theater. I'm your Dungeon Master Jazz. Theo is played by Chris Freedom. Ellen is played by Duke Walter. Kevin is played by Dean Martin Jr. And Mila is played by our special guest, Cher Davis. TTRP Theater is a group of actors, artists, and gamers from all walks of life that play a diverse set of games in a diverse set of styles. We have a wide array of content available for free on YouTube. Search TTRP Theater. Follow us on X at TTRP Theater. We'd love to hear your feedback. Comment on YouTube or tweet about the show using hashtag RenCityPod or follow us at the same handle. Be good to one another. See you next time.